Hi, welcome back to another video from brainstemschool.com and today we will be talking about literals and variables. The concept of literals is simple. Literals are the values that you can see in code. So right away we're looking at our literal right here. This is a string literal and you can tell it's a string literal because you see the quotes in the code. Now we're going to talk about variables in depth in a few moments but if I were to put my name, Mike, in a string literal and then assign it to a variable and then if I were to print that variable's value you can see in the output it prints the value Mike, it prints the string Mike. However, over in the code in line number two you see a literal is assigned to a variable. In line number three when I'm actually printing it I'm not printing the literal, I'm printing the variable you could think of it as the variable contains the literal but that's not true in all cases for instance if we're asking for user input so for instance in this case uh, let's use the same variable name input what is your name and then in the next line hello and your name. Now, when we run the program, we'll see it's asking us, what is your name? I'll make up another name. Freddy. Hello, Freddy. So, in this case, nowhere in the code do you see the literal Freddy. The, va the value of the name is taken from user input and stored in the variable. So, back to the topic, which is literals. Literals are values that you can actually see in code. You'll see lots of different kinds or types of values. So over here we have an int literal, an integer literal for int literal. Oh, let's get rid of that user input. We can have a float literal or decimal number literal. 3.14 you could have a boolean literal true now this is interesting if I put the word true between quotes it is actually a string literal but if I were to print it as output the output is identical so that's something just not to get confused on and just to be sure I will ask it is true in quotes equal to true outside of quotes? And the answer, of course, is false. So this is kind of an interesting, interesting example. If I print the string literal true is equal to the literal Boolean literal true, then the response is no, they are not equal. They are different. So that's literals in a nutshell. In a nutshell and the next concept is variables. Think of variables as containers. Now in Python they are containers with special powers but generally in programming a variable is a container much like a Tupperware. You can store a value in it and that's about it. Now in this case our variable x will store the value 5 in it. Let's store the value 6 in the variable y and I can say print x plus y and again you're gonna see an example where the output is 11 but nowhere in the code is the literal 11 so the variables x and y store the values 5 and 6 respectively now in this very same program I can assign a new value to x and then I will print x plus y again so keeping in mind that programs are procedural and it happens line by line you'll see that first we put 5 in the container x we put 6 in the container y and then we print x plus y then we put 9 in the container x now a container cannot contain two values at once so it calculates a new value based on the expression x plus y and we see that the result is 15 so procedurally we have two output statements one in line three and one in line five 
and in the output we see the results are 11 and 15. It's really important to notice two things. First off, I'm using the single equal sign for assignment. I'm not using the double equal sign. The double equal sign, as you saw in that earlier example, is the equal to operator and it actually asks a question. So in this case it says statement seems not seems to have no effect and in fact it does have no effect because what I'm doing here is I'm asking does not x equal 9 when in fact I want to do this which instead says put 9 in x or assign 9 to x. The next concept that you need to understand about programming as opposed to math is that the assignment operator is an action it is not descriptive so for instance if we were to have a value x is 3 and a value y equals 5 times x plus 4 it's going to evaluate in sequence first 3 gets assigned to x then the calculation 3 times 5 is 15 plus 4 is 19 that result 19 is then assigned to y now those of you who are good at math would recognize that this looks a lot like the equation for a line y equals mx plus b but a line goes on forever in all directions and the formula the equation for the line describes it at any point however in programming everything exists in the moment and a value is only a single value so the container x has 3 in it the container y has 19 in it and this expression exists only in line 2 to calculate the result and thus assign it to the variable y programming is not math I'll repeat that now here's an expression that will confuse a lot of people who have a fondness for math if I were to assign a value 1 to x, and of course if I were to print x, it would be no surprise that the result would be 1. However, if I were then to assign the value x equals x plus 1, you'll see that there's no problem at all. It simply outputs 2. The reason is that the assignment operator is evaluated first on the right hand side and then that result is assigned to the left hand side. So over here we see that x's value was 1 then we add 1 to it. That result has a value of 2 and that resulting value is assigned to the container x. So since it happens in sequence right side then left side we have no problem at all making what in math would be a confusing and impossible statement. In Python, though not in all languages, you can actually assign two values at once. x comma y equals 4 comma 5. Print x, print y. And the results, of course, will be 4 and 5 on different lines. Finally, while we're talking about variables, it's important to mention the rules for variable naming. The rules for variable naming are simple. First, Variable names may contain letters, numbers, and the underscore. Second, they may not start with a number. And third, you may not use a reserved word. Python's reserve words include words like if, for, while, other things that have meanings in the Python language. Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Make sure and head over to brainstemschool.com and download the Quick Start eBook. Recommend it to a friend. Uh, sign up for to get posts directly delivered to your inbox. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and have a great rest of the day.